Let's look at a few examples where we need to find the Thevenin equivalent source and the Thevenin equivalent resistance. Typically, we want to know how a large collection of circuit elements is seen by one particular circuit element. In this example, it's the load resistor. When we're asked to find the Thevenin equivalent source and the Thevenin equivalent resistance, what we're really saying is that we want to simplify everything to the left of the dotted line and replace it with a single source and a single resistance. As seen by the load resistor, these two sources should be the same. Let's go ahead and find the Thevenin equivalent voltage first. We just need to remove the load resistor from the circuit and imagine that we're hooking up a voltmeter to the terminals and measuring the voltage. What voltage would we measure? That's the Thevenin equivalent voltage. When we're carrying out this measurement, there's no current flowing through the 20 ohm resistor. Therefore, the Thevenin equivalent voltage is just the voltage that shows up across the 2 ohm resistor. The entire 2 amps from this source flows through the 10 ohm resistor, and then it also flows down through the 2 ohm resistor. Using Ohm's law, I know that V equals IR, or 2 times 2, which is 4 volts. To find the Thevenin equivalent resistance, we need to zero out all of the sources and then just see what the effective resistance is looking back from the terminals. If I zero out that 2 amp source, I really mean that I want to dial it down to 0 amperes. If I dial a source down to 0 amperes, no current's flowing, and no current flowing corresponds to an open circuit. So let me go ahead and open up that circuit. We now have a 20 ohm resistor that's in series with a 2 ohm resistor, which is in parallel with an open circuit. 20 plus 2 is just 22. The Thevenin equivalent resistance is then just 22 ohms. What this means is that our circuit network consisting of a 2 ampere source and three resistors of 10 ohms, 20 ohms, and 2 ohms all together can be replaced by a single Thevenin equivalent voltage source of 4 volts and a Thevenin equivalent resistance of 22 ohms, and the load resistor wouldn't be able to tell the two apart. Let's look at example two. We're tasked with finding, again, the Thevenin equivalent voltage and the Thevenin equivalent resistance. I can see that although the circuit is drawn in kind of a funny way, the two 20 ohm resistors are just in parallel with one another. And the two 10 ohm resistors are also just in parallel with one another. Let me go ahead and redraw the circuit to make that clear. With the circuit redrawn, it's more apparent that we have several resistors in parallel with one another. Let's go ahead and combine the two 20 ohm resistors. Together, they make 10 ohms. Likewise, when I combine the two 10 ohm resistors, I get 5 ohms. To find the Thevenin equivalent voltage, I need to imagine that I'm measuring the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor that's remaining. It's just a voltage divider. The voltage is 10 15ths of the 12 volts. Our Thevenin equivalent voltage is thus just 8 volts. To find the Thevenin equivalent resistance, I need to zero out our sources and find the resistance seen from the terminals. If I zero down the 12 volt source, I dial it down to 0 volts. 0 volts is a short circuit, so let me go ahead and short my source. Let's slide this 5 ohm resistor up here on the circuit diagram to make it clear that the 10 ohm resistor is actually in parallel with the 5 ohm resistor. My Thevenin equivalent resistance is thus just 5 ohms in parallel with 10 ohms. I multiply in the numerator and add in the denominator. We end up with 50 divided by 15, which is 3.33 ohms. I now have my Thevenin equivalent voltage and resistance. In the next problem, we have two different sources and we have three resistors, but the power of using the Thevenin equivalent source is that we can combine all of the resistors and all of the sources into just one source and one resistor. Let's use the node voltage analysis method in order to first find the Thevenin equivalent voltage. Since no current is going to flow through this 20 ohm resistor when I'm doing that voltage measurement, I don't really have to worry about it, and I can label this node as my VTH. Let's apply the Kirchhoff current law at this node. First, through the 20 ohm resistor, we have current flowing into the node. That current is 12 minus VTH divided by 20 ohms. We then have 1 ampere flowing into that node from the 1 amp source. We then have current flowing out through that 20 ohm resistor. That current is given by VTH divided by 20. Let's solve the equation for VTH. I'll multiply every term by 20. 
I have 32 equals 2 times the Thevenin equivalent voltage, so my Thevenin voltage is just 16 volts. For the Thevenin equivalent resistance, I need to zero out my sources. Zeroing out our current source gives us an open circuit, and zeroing out our voltage source gives us a short circuit. When finding the Thevenin equivalent resistor, I see that I have 20 ohms, and that's in series with two 20 ohm resistors that are in parallel with one another. The two parallel resistors give us 10 ohms, and we're left with 30 ohms for the Thevenin equivalent resistance. In the previous three examples, we've gotten some practice in finding the Thevenin equivalent voltage and resistance. But in the next example, let's use this knowledge to do something a little bit more interesting. You might recognize this example as being very similar to one of the problems we worked in a previous video. In this example, we're asked how long it would take for a capacitor to be charged up to within 99.3% of its eventual voltage. Now, one way to approach this problem would be to start writing down differential equations. We know the relationship between current and voltage in a capacitor, for example, and we know the relationship in the resistors. The problem with that method, though, is we're going to end up with a big mess. I think it can be worked a lot easier by replacing all of the resistors in the source by a Thevenin equivalent resistance and source, which will simplify our problem considerably. Let me show you what I mean. If I'm measuring the Thevenin equivalent voltage, then I would imagine that this is a terminal and this is a terminal. No current would be flowing through the 500 ohm resistor during the period of time when I've disconnected the capacitor from the circuit and I've hooked up the voltmeter in order to measure the Thevenin equivalent voltage. Therefore, the Thevenin equivalent voltage would show up across this 1 kilo ohm resistor, and it would just be 5 volts because we have the 10 volts divided evenly across the two 1 kilo ohm resistors. For the Thevenin equivalent resistance, I would have to zero out my 10 volt source. When zeroing out that source, it winds up being a closed circuit, and my two 1 kilo ohm resistors are in parallel with one another. That makes 500 ohms and that would be in series with our other 500 ohm resistor. 500 plus 500 is 1 kilo ohm. Therefore, our Thevenin equivalent resistance here is 1 kilo ohm. Let's now redraw our circuit in a more simplified way. From the perspective of the capacitor, this simplified circuit is equivalent to the more complicated circuit that we started with. Now, it's worth pointing out that I could ask questions related to the interior of that more complicated circuit that we wouldn't be able to solve using the Thevenin method. For example, I could ask, how much power is the 10 volt source supplying? And I wouldn't be able to answer that through the Thevenin equivalent circuit. The 5 volt equivalent source is going to be supplying a different amount of power. But you see, the capacitor doesn't know that. From the perspective of the capacitor, the current flowing out of that circuit and the voltage supplied at the terminals of that circuit are going to be identical to the more complicated circuit that we started with. And that's why the Thevenin equivalent method can be more powerful. It allows us to simplify equations because this simplified circuit is a circuit that we've already solved. Let's call the voltage across this capacitor V. 5 volts is our DC voltage. We derived this equation in our video on examples of inductors and capacitors. It was example 2. We want the voltage across the capacitor to be 99.3% of the voltage across the 5 volt source. The DC voltage cancels out of this equation. It turns out that the capacitor is going to need 5 RC time constants to reach that particular voltage. When we plug in R and C, that is, when we plug in 1 kilo ohm and 1,000 microfarads, we're left with a time of 5 seconds. It's going to take this capacitor 5 seconds to charge. If you enjoyed watching this video, then you might be interested in following our playlist and learning more about the fundamentals of electrical circuits.